types or genres of literature. Fiction, nonfiction, poetry, and drama. This is what English teachers told us, because when I was in the department, we had teachers regularly there. I was a teacher many, many years ago, and I was never going to exclude teachers from the process. At different grade levels, we had different groups of teachers to make sure that what we had was developmentally appropriate for the grade levels they were teaching for a variety of students, but of high quality. And who wrote most of the standards? Different English teachers, because if there's any one group who can write well in a high school, it's the English teacher. And I know because I've worked with all kinds of teachers in the high school. English teachers, by virtue of their training, write well. So we had English teachers writing standards, poetry, fiction, it didn't matter what. Compared to what happened at the Common Core level, where they did not have anyone who could write clear English for English teachers, which is why they're having so many interpretive problems now. Let me go on further, just to say briefly that it was more than the focus on literary study. There was a strong vocabulary strand. There were clearly written standards that elementary teachers could understand about the teaching of reading, which had been my particular area of study when I was doing graduate work. This was in sharp contrast to what was in the Common Core English Language Arts Standards and why I began <coughs> writing critical pieces long before Pioneer asked me to start writing analyses for them. I had been asked by uh, the New York Times Room for Debate, an online blog, during the summer of 2009 to start writing about the drafts of Common Core Standards that came out. And I started writing critical things even then, because it was clear that whatever they were coming up with was not written for English teachers who taught in real American schools, and it was not written for the kind of classes or subject they taught. There was a requirement that 50% of what English teachers, as well as elementary teachers, would have to teach for reading instruction would be something called informational text. What exactly informational text was in the English class, we have yet to find out. Because information is not something that is taught in an English class. It is taught in a history class, in a science class, in a math class. but Information is not taught in an English class. Literary work, different kinds of literary works are, and historical literary materials that relate to the works that are chosen. So 50% was to be set aside for the teaching of informational texts, and another 50% would be for literary texts. Now, what does that mean to the typical English teacher? It means you reduce literary study and you add something from an area that you haven't been trained to teach. That's the problem. 50-50 looks like it's fair, right? <laughs> Except that it makes no Teaching sense this. for the English teacher. 50% of what is taught in grade 10 has to be informational. What would the English teacher use? Now, what has been happening, as I have been looking at assignments that come in at different grade levels from the few teachers who are willing to share what a, quote, common core consultant tells them, gives them as an assignment, many of these are what I would call texts with a mission. And that is what you have to be very careful about, because they're considered informational texts. It's persuasive writing of some kind, because the goal is more attitudinal it's not informational because that is not what the English teacher teaches. If it were a piece of history, that would could also be attitudinal, but it might at least be something to do with history. But in the English class, it can be a very scattered, fragmented kind of curriculum as the English teacher incorporates materials that have no relationship to the English teacher's expertise. An example, not so much of the text with a mission, but of the peculiar attitude of the person who created this, and that was David Coleman, came to me from a grade eight teacher in Arkansas, who has dared to write to me because she was a US Navy veteran. 
and had been a dock master in Iraq. So she was not someone who could be easily silenced. And she's since been told by her school system that she is not to speak publicly about anything to do with curriculum and assessment. Jamie has told me that. Now, this is an interesting phenomenon in itself. But she showed me the assignment that all the grade 8 English teachers in Fayetteville, which is a very sophisticated college community, had been given by the Common Core consultant as a writing prompt. Students who were to compare Orwell's Animal Farm with the Russian Revolution and to write about characters and events that seem to be analogous. First question is, how do eighth graders write about the Russian Revolution? Have they even studied it? What would they study? Where would they study it? So I asked Jamie, I said, what are you using to study the Russian Revolution in grade eight in Fayetteville? And she said, well, we have a film about the Tsar's murder, <laughs> and that's it. Whatever the kids pull off the internet will, be, will feed into, I mean, this is bizarre. It's a ludicrous assignment. Moreover, the assignment also asked the children in grade eight to define an allegory. And Animal Farm is not considered an allegory, because I checked this out with a PhD in literature that I gave the assignment. I said, tell me how you would critique this. He said, first of all, it's not an allegory. Uh, 1984 might be considered an allegory, but not Animal Farm. It would be closer to a fable because it uses animals. Yeah. In any event, the point was that this is a ludicrous assignment, but it illustrates two things that English teachers have been told by David Coleman, who is now head of the college board. Read historical materials without contextual information. Cold reading levels the playing field, and I'm quoting from him. Now, this is one of the more bizarre ideas I have ever heard. Anyone will tell you that you cannot read the Gettysburg Address, for example, without understanding the historical context of the Gettysburg Address, or for any historical document. How do they read the Russian Revolution without knowing 19th century Russian history? Doesn't matter if it levels the playing field. They're all equally ignorant. <laughs> That's the only way I can figure that one out. And then what we've got is all this material that is, quote, informational and only one piece of literature, which Animal Farm would be considered a, an example of. And I said to Jamie, how did you handle the Russian Revolution? She said, well, I had to spend several months teaching it, learning it myself, because she's an English teacher, not a history teacher. So these are the bizarre things that are now beginning to take place, depending on what texts have been chosen, whether a school system gave some money or a common core consultant. I was in California three days ago, and that school system was, uh, what is it, uh, Conejo? Conejo? I'm sorry, I can't pronounce these things correctly. It was in Ventura County. And the school board had just been discussing $200,000 for a common core consultant. Oh my God. To help this very well-to-do county that had very high achieving students and presumably good teachers figure out what kinds of assignments would satisfy the English requirements for common core. I won't go into more details, but it's the details that tell you that there is something very screwy going on. And it is not useful to kids, and it's going to have very peculiar results when we finally get the results of any tests back. So that's just a problem with a part of Common Core's English language arts standards, is this 50-50 division that was arbitrary. The percentages were simply plucked from this person's head, maybe in the middle of the night, I wouldn't know. But there's no basis in research to say there should be a 50-50 divide. Now, what has been used as the rationale for that? Well, the kind of reading we do when we're adults is mainly informational. Yeah, true. But does that mean that's what we teach in grade 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 in the English class? There's no logical second course there at all. Wait, somebody wave a card when it's time for me to stop talking. You want Q&A. Okay, you just have to let me know, because I can go on. <laughs> I'm not sleeping, am I? <laughs> okay. I mean, the anecdotes, or the actual examples, 
tell you more about a confused picture across the country. We're not going to have an equal curriculum across the country because different works will be chosen, even within the same state for that matter. So we will not have equal expectations, which supposedly is one of the great goals of all of this. I certainly believe in equal expectations, but the equal expectations should address themselves ultimately to standards that relate to the content of what has been studied. This is the second major flaw, which governs a lot of the problems to begin with in Common Core, and that most of its standards are not content standards, they're skills, generic skills. Now, what do I mean by that? Because this is very important to understand. In contrast to mathematics, where your mathematics standards have to indicate some content to be called mathematics, otherwise they wouldn't be mathematics, although they do have a whole section on practices. Science standards have much less content, by the way. I want to say something before I forget about the science standards that just came out by Achieve, that two states, including Rhode Island, have at least have just approved. They may be in process here. I don't know what's going to happen with our state board of ed on these new science standards, but they have just been panned by a group of scientists who reviewed them for Fordham. That review just came out today for those of you who are particularly interested in science. But they are inquiry-based, and what they've managed to do is get rid of most of high school chemistry and physics. Now, this is in the name of upgrading, but this is what scientists are saying who have just reviewed these scientists, these science standards. Yes, the proponents are saying, oh, but they've been integrated in some way in other standards. But the person who is the specialist in looking at the chemistry standards and the physicist who looked at the physics standards at the high school level can't find the content they think should be in an American high school. So we have serious problems in the future if that is what is going to happen to American students in general. Because we live in a country, as most industrialized countries do, where you have an enormous, re an enormous reliance on a mathematical, technological level of skill, knowledge, and literacy, basically, in those areas. And they are being dumbed down, removed, where they thought they needed to remove them in order to equalize expectations. I wrote to the person evaluating the chemistry standards because I happen to know her. She has a PhD in geology. And I said, can you explain to me why you think the chemistry standards were disappeared? And she said, she thinks it's because chemistry at the high school level, with the solid course, requires more math than these kids will know. Chemistry requires a certain level of mathematics. That's her explanation. Now, she's only guessing because she doesn't know why chemistry, most of chemistry has been disappeared. So let's get to this second flaw that I was mentioning about the teaching, first of all, the teaching of informational text for over 50% of the time, and the emphasis on skills, not literary or cultural knowledge in the English class. I wanted to give you an example so you would understand how to read and interpret yourself because this has been part of the game that's being played. Here is an example of a standard, a common core standard. Analyze how and why individuals, events, and ideas develop and interact over the course of the text. Now you're going to look at me and say, huh? <laughs> That's what I, I'll read it again. Of a text. text. A text. What does it mean? Text. Of a text, T-E-X-T, -E of a word. Analyze how and why individuals, events, and ideas develop and interact over the course of a text. It can be applied. Why is it a skill and not a content standard? Because it can be applied to the three little pigs, as well as to Moby Dick. There's nothing in that that tells you the level of reading. That's what I'm trying to help you understand. It can also be applied to Moby Dick 
or to the Hunger Games. It has nothing about quality in it. It's a skill. It's a process, but it has nothing to do with content. There are more. There are nine, ten of them. Integrate and evaluate content presented in diverse formats and media, including visually and quantitatively, as well as in words. <laughs> now, can you understand why English teachers are having a problem figuring out a curriculum without the help of a Common Core consultant for $200,000? I mean, that's what you have. Now, what was in the Massachusetts document, that's what will help you to understand why I can make fun of things like that. There was a strand that addressed myth, traditional narrative in classical literature. Here was the grades 9 and 10 standard. Analyze the character structure and themes of classical Greek drama and epic poetry. That was developed and approved by English teachers in the state. It has a cultural specific, it's got a specific genre, and you've got something specific to focus on that is part of literary study, but will help you to develop your critical thinking faculties because that's what emerges from a deep reading of something like that. And we know it was taught because on the MCAS grade 9, 10 test items, and they're always released, this is another interesting legal issue, this was part of the Mass Ed Reform Act statute. It required the release every year of the common items at every grade level. And those of you in the schools or parents who are interested would know that you could just go to a website and download the examples of, that had been there on the website. If you looked at grade nine,